Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today we're going to be doing a front bearing replacement on a 2009 Pontiac G8. So the front bearing is going to be really easy. It's a hub bearing assembly, so you don't need to press it. It screws right in. We'll be working on the driver's side front wheel. We'll be using this Mevotech hub assembly. Since the engine is rear wheel drive, there's no axle nut. And this is nice and simple. It has the ABS sensor built in. You got three bolts that go in and then you're done. Nice easy job. You don't need to press it in. If you have a pressed bearing, I have another video to show you how to do that. I'll leave that video link in the description below. But if you have a bearing that's in a hub assembly like this, this video not only applies to this make and model, but any vehicle that has this type of hub assembly. So here are all the tools you're going to need to do the job. Obviously you're going to need to get your hub bearing. I'm using a Mevotech bearing. I have a bunch of different sockets, ratchet, breaker bar, torque wrench. You're going to need one of these specialty hex sockets. Not everybody has them. This is a 10 millimeter and that's how you get the three hub bolts off. You need some penetrating fluid, anti-seize, and thread locker. And then you'll also need a slide hammer. You could rent that for free or you could go and buy it. It's very useful. It's a good investment. It's up to you. So let's begin. So we can't take the vehicle for a ride because the bearing is so bad we're afraid the wheel is going to fall off, which is definitely not good. But you can really hear the bearing, how bad it is. It sounds gritty and it's kind of like grinding. You shouldn't hear any noise, so listen to this. The other thing is, if you put your hands at the 3 and 9 positions and you shake back and forth, there's play, and that's indicative of a bad bearing. So what we're going to do, it's very simple. All you have to do is remove the caliper and the rotor. You can see here's one bolt right here, and then the other bolt is right down there. After that comes off, we'll place that to the side. Then we'll go to the back here, disconnect our ABS line right here, and then you can see there's one, two, three bolts that hold in the bearing. Remove those three bolts, pull the bearing out, put the new bearing in, bolt it up, bolt up the caliper, and we're done. Now you want to make this easy for yourself. So we're going to turn the steering wheel towards the passenger side so we have more access to the bolts back here. So with this turn to the side, we have more access. We could get behind to these bolts right back here that hold the caliper to the knuckle. So we're going to go and take off that bolt right there. Use your breaker bar. It's an 18 millimeter. Get it on there. We'll crack this bolt loose. So now that we got this top caliper bolt cracked loose, we're going to go down here and get the bottom caliper bolt right there and crack that one loose. And you can see, since we turned the steering wheel, it gives us a lot more access to these bolts so we can get the breaker bar in there and use full leverage. Now we can use our smaller ratchet and get those two bolts off. That's one before we get that bottom bolt out. Once you take that bottom bolt out, the whole caliper is going to come off. And you don't want the caliper to hang by the brake line. So just get a bucket or something and slide it underneath so that you can put the caliper right on the bucket. You could also get a string and then tie the caliper up to the, the spring up here. Just hook it around here, a bungee cord or even a wire hanger. I'm choosing to do the bucket method. It's just easier. It's right here. It's out of the way. Nice and simple. Okay, when it's loose like that and almost unscrewed all the way, get ready because the whole weight of the caliper is going to want to fall. So we got that bolt out. Just wiggle the caliper loose like that. And we can put the caliper right on there. So as you can see, we got the caliper completely off. It's not hanging from the brake line. It's on top of the bucket here. Now we can get the rotor off. So the rotor is being really stubborn, doesn't want to come off. It's all that rust that's in there. So we're going to use a slide hammer and just grab on here. And then we're going to just yank backwards and that's going to pull this right off. There you go. There we go. Okay. Good job, Chris. Good job. Normally the rotor should just come right off, but this one was being a pain. And you could see all that rust behind here, which is why it was being such a pain. With the rotor off, you could see there's one bolt thread there, there's another one there. 
we're gonna end up going back here to get them out. But before we do that, let's get some penetrating fluid and we'll put it right where the hub and the knuckle meet. Right in there. Go on this side too. Don't be afraid to use a lot of this stuff. It'll really soak in there and it'll make getting that off a lot easier. So when we look at the new part, you can see that there's one, two, three bolts that hold this hub in. And when you look from the outside, you can see there's one bolt there, which is that bolt right up there. And then there's also a bolt right down there. And then there's the third bolt on the other side right over there. And this black thing here is the ABS, which we're going to disconnect right now. When you're disconnecting this ABS, be careful because this could be brittle and you don't want to snap it. It's easier to get in here with two hands. Pry down on this and wiggle up here. Just like so. And that comes out. Put that aside. I'd also consider using penetrating fluid on these bolts. Just make it easier to get off. That'll help loosen them up. Just make the job that much easier. So now this is not like a normal bolt. You can't use a regular socket. You have to use one of these hex sockets. Six sided. In this case it's a 10 millimeter. And you definitely want to get one that fits snug. So we had a 3 8 which was loose in here. This is snug, so you don't strip these. And then here's the 3 8 and you can see the 3 8 doesn't really fit snug in here. There's some wiggle room, and you will strip this with the 3 8 So make sure you get the right size. In this case, it's 10 millimeter, and that does not move. That's solid. So we'll start in the bottom corner here and get this one off first. So depending on how tight these are on there and how well the penetrating fluid worked, you might need a breaker bar or at least a really long ratchet. Okay. Okay, got that one out. Now we're going to go and try to get the other side out over there, and then we'll get the top one out. Now we're looking from the other side to get that far one. Okay, got that one out. You can see there's actually red Loctite on here, which is the permanent stuff, and that's why you might need a breaker bar. We just removed that one right there. That was the first one we removed. Now we're going to go up here and get that last one. We don't need an extension for this top one. <coughs> okay. That was our last one, and it's out. So now if we had a nice hub, this would pop right off. But that's not going to happen. It's going to be rust welded on there. So we're going to have to use the slide hammer. So we have our slide hammer puller. You saw me use it before. All you have to do is yank it back and all the momentum pulls it right off. Now for this, we want to get this, which attaches right on to the hub. So this slides right on. And then you get your lug nuts. Then you get your slide hammer, you get your threaded end, and you screw it right in. Now all you have to do is pull back hard, and this should pop out. There we go. And that'll pop right off just like that. Now you can see right in here is all rusty, and that's why it's so hard to get off. All that rust, rust welds it right into the knuckle. Before you put the new hub assembly on, you want to clean out all of this, so use a metal wire brush. Just get in here, get it nice and clean. Remove all that rust that's in there. Now I'm going to get some anti-seize, and I'm going to just put a little bit right in here, just so the next time you have to do this, hopefully never again, but just in case, you could easily get it off. Just need a little bit, not a lot. Just rub it all the way around. You could also put some right on here right where that surface mates to the hub. Now with the new one here, there's no particular way it's supposed to go in, but if you remember, the ABS sensor was kind of on this side, so I'm just gonna put it back in that way. And that just goes right in. No special tools needed, no press, nothing. Now we can get our three bolts in, tighten them down, get our caliper back on, and we're good to go. So we have those three bolts that we unscrewed, and you can see they do have that red Loctite on that I was talking about. We're not going to replace it with red Loctite, we're going to replace it with blue Loctite. So since this has the red Loctite, what you want to do 
is you want to get a screwdriver or something to get in here and dig all that red Loctite out because it's solid. And you don't want to cross thread these. So just get in there, clean the threads out, and then we can put our blue Loctite on. So once you finally get these relatively clean, just get your blue Loctite where your red Loctite was. Just put a little bit, you don't need a lot, just about that much, and that's perfect. And that'll just prevent vibrations from loosening this up. We're also going to torque it to the correct torque, so you won't have to worry about this coming loose. We'll get this first one up here, we'll do the top one first. Just tighten it by hand first, get it in there. Nice clean threads going nice and easy. We'll do the bottom one next. Right in. Just hand tighten it. And the last one is the far one on this side. So go in here, thread it in by hand, just like the others. So now we're going to torque these bolts. They have to be torqued down to 79 foot pounds. Get your torque wrench in here. We'll do the far side first. Get it right in there. Okay, that's one torqued. That's that far one here. Next one we're doing is this one right here. Good, that's two torqued. And then the last one we're doing is that one right up there. Okay, that's three torqued. So we just finished torquing down that one. Before that we did that one, and the first one we did was that one. They're all torqued down, ready to go. So now don't forget about your ABS sensor, because then your ABS light will come on. You want to plug that in, and that just clicks right in and that's good to go. Now we're gonna put the rotor on, then put the caliper on, tighten down the two bolts, and we're done. Before we put our rotor back on, you saw we had a hard time taking it off. That's because the rotor gets rusted right to the hub, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take some anti-seize, you don't need a lot, just use some on here, and just cover that, and that'll prevent anything rust welding together, so you'll be able to get your rotor off a lot easier next time. So now we'll get our rotor on, I'm going to get a lug on here, just for now. And that'll just hold this rotor as we put the brake caliper on. The brake caliper we could just slide right on. Might need a little bit of wiggling. Just like so. We have our caliper bolts. We're going to just put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And we're going to get our caliper bolt, slide that in, and then lift up our caliper until it fits in. Just like that, and then we can hand tighten it. And once we can't hand tighten it anymore, we'll do the bottom one. Now we'll go behind to get that bottom one in. Might have to wiggle the caliper around. Hand tighten that until you can't hand tighten it anymore. Good. So now we'll go in and just tighten these up. Start with the top one. Good. Once that's snug, we'll go to the bottom one. Tighten this up all the way so it's snug. And once you snug this up all the way, now we can torque them down. So now we're going to use the torque wrench and torque down the top caliper bolt to 44 foot-pounds plus 120 degrees. Okay, so that's torqued. Now we need to do 120 degrees. So that's a little bit more than 90. Okay, top one's torqued, now we'll do the bottom. Again, that's the same thing, 44 foot-pounds. Good, and then you just want to pay attention and you want to do 120 degrees. I'm actually going to go back to the regular ratchet to do the extra 120 degree angle turn. I already did the top, but it'll make my life easier for the bottom one. Okay, that's how you replace out one of these hub bearings. It's very simple, three bolts, as you saw, doesn't take very long. So I got a quote and it would cost over $700 to do this, and we saved more than half of that doing it ourselves. And as you saw, pretty simple job. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing.